Hey what's good, I'm Sadia and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about my septoplastic surgery experience as well as my recovery. Now I know this has got absolutely nothing to do with tech but I thought it'd be really useful for those of you that are looking to either get it done or are on the waiting list to have it done. So let's get into it. For those watching out of general interest, a septoplasty surgery is essentially when you have a deviated septum and what that is is essentially the wall that divides your nasal, your right left nasal cavity and your right nasal cavity, it's when that's slightly bent, uh, which is what I had. So in 2012, it was the first time when I reported it to the doctor and I was given nasal spray because what I was, what I was experiencing was blockage in the nose. It was affecting my breathing. And I found specifically uh, at night times, I found it really difficult to go to sleep because I was not able to breathe through my nose. So sometimes I would end up breathing through my mouth. Um, so yeah, the doctor just gave me nasal spray, didn't really work to be honest and um, it did seem to just either get better or I just got so used to it, I kind of ignored it for about 10 years um, and then last year I kind of had enough, uh, I, had a new, I had a new doctor at this point, went to the surgery and I explained the same issues, I was having you know a lot of nasal blockage, it was really horrible, really annoying, especially at night time. I did kind of find though that in the summer it was really bad and I don't know if it was because you know it was a lot hotter then um, maybe because of the warmth the warm air dry air maybe I'm not sure but either way I told the doctor that I had previously had the nasal sprays and they did absolutely nothing this time he said I'm going to give you another nasal spray but this time it has steroids in it so I was like mm, okay but he, he did say you know if it doesn't work come back and then we'll will look deeper into the issue. So obviously I tried the nasal spray with the steroids. Of course, as I expected, it didn't do the job. It didn't do anything. In fact, I used to find that it used to make the blockage even worse. So that was interesting. Anyway, a month later, I went back to the GP. This was last year in 2023. And he, this was a different GP this time. And he checked, he had a look up nose and basically said, yeah, you've got a deviated septum. So what he did was refer me to the ENT at the hospital, so the ear, nose, throat department. Um, so I got the referral literally within a month. So my GP did a really good job. Like they were quite fast. So I was quite impressed. I was expecting a much longer wait. So I had the referral appointment and the guy used a camera and a torch or whatever. He looked up my nose and yeah, he basically confirmed that, yeah, I do have a deviated septum. Um, he also did a little test where he blocked, he kind of pinched one side of my nose um, to check how I was breathing and for me it was my left side which was uh, more impacted so the deviated septum was sort of shifted to the left which was causing blockage on my left side of my nose so yeah because he had uh, confirmed that I do have a deviated septum I was eligible for the surgery I had to fill out a consent form um, he explained what the risks were um, which to be honest there wasn't much it's a very minor surgery I was told that I would be in and out of the hospital on the same day and that the cut recovery is not too bad. However, he did scare me a little bit because I asked him like how I'm not very good with pain. I have a very low throat. Thro I have a very low pain threshold. And um, so I said, like, what what will the pain be like? And he asked me, what is your pain threshold like? And I said, it's very, very low. And he just stared back at me with a smart, big smile on his face. And honestly, that scared me because to me, that sounded like, well, it's going to be very painful. So good luck, girl. Uh, but anyway, he said that I should get an appointment within about three months. It wasn't three months. So this uh, referral appointment was in May 2023. And I didn't get my letter for my appointment until January 2024. And then my appointment was in February 2024. So it was about roughly a seven eight month wait which was absolutely fine I was very very excited when I got my appointment although at that point I did start to get a little bit scared as well so move fast forward to February 27th and I went to the hospital at 6 7 15 a.m actually so my appointment was at 7 15 a.m and they say that you have to fast for at least six hours so I wasn't allowed to eat anything from 2 a.m which was absolutely fine so what I did was the night before I had my dinner at 6 p.m. as normal and then I kind of had another mini meal up around 9 p.m. So I was fasting from 9 p.m. and then I was allowed water up until 6.30 a.m. in the morning. So about 45 minutes before my appointment you are allowed some water and then after that absolutely nothing. 
So yeah, seven fifteen got to got to the hospital. They checked me in, um, and then I had to wait in the waiting room for maybe like two minutes. And then they called me over and they took me to the hospital bed that will, the hospital bed that was basically going to be mine. Um, and I'm not joking. I didn't think about the surgery at all. I didn't Google it. I didn't do any research on it because I just didn't want to know. Um, I was quite scared. So I was like, I'm just not going to bother doing any Googling, nothing like that. But when I got to the hospital bed, I did start to feel a little scared. I'm not going to lie. We got really nervous and I was like, oh my God, like this is it. And I was just thinking about the after pain more so than the actual surgery itself. Um, so my initial thought was that I was, I didn't want to be put to sleep. So I did actually have a, I forgot to mention, there was a pre-op consultation. So about a few months before the actual operation and also a week before the operation, I did get a call from the NHS. It was just a pre-op consultation where they ask any questions that you might have they go over your health you know have you got diabetes have you got this that how you know has there been any changes in your medication or anything like that so um i did actually ask will they put me to sleep you know what will the anest- what anesthetic will they give me will it be local general um you know whatnot and the lady on the phone at the pre-op appointment um at this point i did get a little bit scared because she mentioned that um, they'll either give me the local anesthetic where I will be awake and they'll just sort of numb my nose. Um, there's the general anesthetic where they put you to sleep. But she also mentioned, which this is the one that scared me, was that they might potentially give you a spinal block or an epidural. I didn't see how or why they should put an injection in my back for this operation. But that did kind of scare me a little bit. But yeah, so I really didn't want to be put to sleep. I'm not actually sure why, because it's probably better to. Um, so my thought was, you know, I'm going to, they're going to assess me on the day and I'll have the option. And for me, I was thinking, I'm going to just say to them, just numb my nose. I don't want to be put to sleep. So what happened on the day was obviously I got to my bed, um, had to wait maybe 20 minutes. And then the nurse came over and she basically asked me all of the questions that they asked on the pre-op uh, consultation, just to like verify if there's any, if there's been any health changes or anything like that. She took the measurements of my ankles for the compression socks, which I'll get to in a second. Um, And then after a little while, the anesthetic person came. Sorry, I'm not sure what this, what their job role title is. I can't remember. But basically the guy that was going to give me the anesthetic, he came over, he did his own assessment, which was quite similar. uh, Confirmed what time I last ate, confirmed what time I last had some water. And then he basically said to me that they will be putting me to sleep. Um, so at that point I was kind of relieved because I was like literally bricking it I was like actually maybe it'll be a good idea if I'm just put to sleep so I don't have to actually be scared whilst they're doing it or anything like that Um, but what I was worried about was the the tube that they put down your throat so because they're obviously working on your nose you can't really breathe through your nose whilst they're working on it so obviously I would have to breathe through my mouth so I did ask the anaesthetic guy, like, will a tube be put down my throat and how, how far down will it go? Because like I mentioned, I have a low pain threshold and my worry was, you know, am I going to feel after pain on my nose and also in my throat as well, which isn't going to be pleasant, especially when it comes to eating. So he, he said, you know, are you worried? And I was like, yes, I am, um, because I don't want I don't really want any pain. And he just had a big grin on his face and he goes, oh, no, you, you won't feel anything. And he mentioned that it's going to be a small sort of tube. He said it was like a plastic rubber type of material. And he said it's really small and it will only go as far down as the back of my tongue. So it wasn't going to go like all the way down or anything like that. He also mentioned that the tube is going to put down my throat once they've put me to sleep. So I won't feel them putting it in. And he mentioned that they won't take it out until I'm starting to wake up. But even then, I won't feel it. Um, so yeah that actually made me feel a lot better and at that point once I had seen him and spoken to him I felt a lot better a lot more confident about the surgery I was no longer so scared so thank you Mr Anesthetic Guy (laughs) so a little while later the doctor came she was part of the surgery team and she did her own assessment I guess it was kind of repeated um, so all of the questions they asked is basically quite consistent which I think is really good so you know they're definitely doing their due diligence which is obviously really good um So yeah, she asked all the questions. As she mentioned, you know, she confirmed what I was getting done. So what I found really good about the team was that every single person that spoke to me asked me, what are you getting done? Like, why are you here? So they all made sure that I knew I was well aware of what was getting done and what I was going to go through that day. 
every single person asked me that and I thought that was really really good um definitely a lot of consistency there so they were definitely you know doing what they needed to do so yeah she basically told me that yes it's my left side that's uh, they're going to work on and she mentioned that they will be they will be putting nasal packing in my nose um after the surgery which will help with the bleeding um it'll basically just absorb all the blood and it is dissolvable which I was happy about uh, which meant I don't have to didn't have to go back to the hospital to get those uh stints stents out um so yeah I was quite happy with that but she did mention though that she goes your nose may be blocked for a few months sorry a few weeks she said um I was a bit disappointed in that because I thought it was only going to be a one to two week recovery but we'll get onto that shortly so once she verified everything she left and on the hospital bed was some stockings and some compression socks so the stockings had a hole in it where your big toe goes so I'm guessing that's probably so they can um monitor your foot um whilst you're in surgery um and then you've got the compression socks on top as well uh which were not fun to wear they were really thick made me really really warm but essentially you all I had to wear was the the gown you have your compression socks and the stockings obviously nothing else underneath except your underwear of course <laughs> so yeah I was sitting there waiting this must have been about a 40 minute process and then the porter came over and basically said, we're ready for you. So I made a quick trip to the toilet and I then said, give me a second. I want to message my mum. So I text my mum, let her know that, you know, they're taking me now. I'm about to go into surgery. And then they put me in a, a hospital wheelchair and gave me a blanket and basically said, you know, it's going to be quite cold because they were taking me from one end of the hospital to the other end of the hospital, um, which did take quite a few minutes he said it was going to be a long trip but it wasn't that bad anyway they wheeled me over to the anesthetic room I got there and they weren't ready for me the nurse was quite annoyed and the, the porter and the nurse that went with me were quite annoyed because they, they weren't sure why I was called um, if they weren't ready anyway I was waiting in the anesthetic room for about 20 minutes so at this point I had switched from the wheelchair to the bed um and you know I could see all the anesthetic stuff around the room I wasn't scared like I mentioned because I'd spoken to the anesthetic guy at that point I was really really confident and I was just very much looking forward to getting it done so the nurse kept me company for a good 20 minutes we were just having a chat funnily enough she was talking about how she's got a deviated septum but she was going to go to Turkey to get a whole nose job done she really didn't need to her nose was absolutely fine but anyway each to their own so 20 minutes later, the anaesthetic guy came in, he apologised for the delay and they then stuck two sticky pads on my back. So one on my like high up here and one like further down. So they did have to undo my gown to put those stickies on. And those, those sticky pads were essentially for them to attach the monitors to. And speaking of monitors, I did, forgot to mention that every single person that uh, I spoke to, so in terms of the nurse, the anaesthetic person, the the GP, uh, the doctor, um, at each stage, I was, my blood was taken, sorry, not my blood, my blood pressure was checked and my heart rate was checked. So at each stage that uh, those were constantly checked, which was really good. So, you know, they put the sticky pads on, uh, ready for the monitors to get attached. And then I was told to have my hand out and I had to just do this um, for a while. And then they said to open my hand, they put the uh the little anesthetic thing in and then he's told me that you're gonna feel some cold going through your veins and you'll start to feel drowsy funnily enough I didn't feel drowsy at all uh, because he told me to breathe quite you know inhale and exhale so I was doing that like really deeply um he did say you'll feel drowsy I didn't feel it at all I was so focused on my breathing the next thing I know I've woken up and I'm in theatre. Well, actually not in theatre because they put you in a different room after they've done your surgery. So I wake up now and I'm looking around the room and I know that the operation is done because I can feel like sort of inflammation within my nose. Definitely feels quite sensitive and I know something's been done. Um, and I was hella drowsy. And I have to say that that anaesthetic, like, wow, that it just, it actually feels really good when you wake up. Like the drowsy feeling it's like you can just go back to sleep and you'll have the best sleep ever. Like it felt really, really good. Um, so yeah, when I woke up, I saw a nurse, female and male, standing next to me. They asked how I was doing and I was honestly so out of it. 
I was able to speak there and I was like, yeah, I'm okay, but I'm really, really drowsy. And they just kind of laughed at me. And I know, I just know that my face probably looked hilarious because I was so out of it. Um, and they confirmed that it was around 11 a.m. at this point. So I had, uh, in terms of anesthetic time, that was done at 9.20, around 9.30 actually. And they said that the operation had completed around 10.30. So it was roughly around an hour of actual surgery. Um, but I hadn't woken up until 11. So it took me around half an hour after the surgery to actually wake up. Um, so yeah, they monitor again, they were monitoring my blood pressure, my heart rate. And then after a while, I'm not actually sure how long because I was quite out of it. At this point, I was still in the bed. Uh, they wheeled me on the bed to the ward where my, where my bed was. Um, and then they kind of just joined the beds together and I moved from one bed to the other. And that was basically just my recovery stage. They said that I'll be able to go home within a couple of hours. Um, and that finally I was able to eat. So they offered um, sandwiches, yogurt, and of course water. I didn't really fancy eating because I felt like it might be a bit of pain with my nose, you know, whilst you eat. So I just wanted a yogurt and I had some water. And from drinking the water, I needed to go to the toilet, go for a wee. And honestly, I was walking like a penguin because I was so out of it. My body felt like jelly. I was still recovering from an anaesthetic. Um, so I was walking very slowly and like a penguin. So just picture that. Thinking about it is quite funny. But um, yeah, so I was out of it, had had the food, well, the yogurt and the water. Um, obviously, it felt really clogged up, like my nose felt really blocked. So I was essentially breathing through my mouth. So I knew like, here we go. This is going to be me for the next couple of weeks. And yeah, it was about maybe half an hour later the nurse came back and basically said you know you can get undressed you can get dressed now sorry um so yeah you can get dressed and we'll check you out at 1 p.m so 1 p.m they basically told me that I was able to check out but obviously my mum and my sister were going to be picking me up and uh, my mum had actually had to come into the ward to sign me out so they don't actually let you leave on your own which is obviously good um, because with the anaesthetic you definitely can't drive so yeah, make sure you have somebody that can drop you off and pick you up. Before I got checked out, though, I did start to feel some leakage. So when I came out of the theatre, they didn't they didn't have any like tape on my nose, nothing like that. I just came out and I basically just had nothing there. Um, but that's because they put the nasal packing inside my nose. They did say, and in my um, checkout notes or discharge notes, it did say that I have nasal packing in both sides, but. And when I looked in the mirror, I could only see it on one side. Anyway, I did start to leak. So there was just a, a, a bit of blood, basically. Um, so they had the gauze, I think it's called, uh, the sort of blue material that you just put across your nose and then tape it up. Um, and that's why I look like Mario. So <laughs> as per the thumbnail, I put the blue tape on with the tape. Um, and honestly, as soon as I looked at myself, I was like, I look like Super Mario. Um, so when I came home, I did put the hat on and take the picture because it just had to be done. But yeah, so I checked out and I was still a bit, I was, it was about 2pm uh, by the time I was picked up and I still feel, I felt a bit drowsy. So I held on to my mum's arm whilst we were walking out and into the car. Um, as soon as I got home, I was still super drowsy and I knew that I could just knock the hell out. So went upstairs, made sure that I had multiple pillows. So you need to sleep. Once you've had your septoplasty surgery, you have to sleep with your head elevated at least for the first few days. So I had about two, three pillows and then I went to sleep and I knocked out pretty much immediately. Um, had really good sleep and then I woke up after an hour. I couldn't sleep for too long because don't forget, you know, my nose was fully blocked up and I had... Um, I was basically mouth breathing which isn't fun and you know that makes your mouth quite dry as well so I only slept for about an hour and then I had some Weetabix to eat because um, again I didn't want to want anything chewy you're not supposed to have anything like too hard or too chewy anyway um, I didn't really want to sort of use my nose at all so I only had I had some Weetabix which or even you can have porridge which is really easy to eat it's basically liquid um, but funnily enough, I actually found eating was easier than drinking water. Um, and I think that's because you kind of have to use your upper lip when you're drinking water. Um, but because of all the blood, um, you get crusting. So it's like just blood that ends up dry and it gets really hard inside your nose. 
So this part here, your upper lip area and just below your nose feels really hard. So you can't sort of like do that. I might look really silly right now, but like in trying to do that or just basically using your upper lip at all, it's basically really stiff. Um, and trying to drink water was really difficult. I had to drink really, really slowly, like have very small baby sips. But eating, it wasn't too bad. So I was quite glad about that. Oh, and in terms of the throat, um, I didn't feel the tube at all. So obviously they took it out before they before I woke up. Um, but I didn't feel it at all, even afterwards. You know, there was no sensation of or any sort of feeling that something's in my throat, which I was really happy about. So eating was absolutely fine. There was zero pain, which I was so happy about uh, because that's the one thing that I was really afraid of, the after pain. But I have to say there was absolutely no pain at all. Um, all I felt was, you know, a lot of blockage. So it's almost like when you have a cold and your nose gets blocked or you have a sinus infection, that's basically what it's like, except the blockage is just extra because it's, you basically have no nose for a couple of, uh, for a couple of days or a few weeks even. So you will be relying on your mouth for breathing um, and it's also blocked up because of the nasal packing that's inside. And again, like I mentioned, it's dissolvable as well. So I was told that within two days, the nasal packing will get removed, uh, not removed, sorry, it will, get, it will dissolve and either fall out by itself. But for me, it actually took about five days. So Tuesday, I had my surgery and by Saturday, the nasal packing came out. But like I mentioned, I only had it on one side. So Tuesday I had my surgery, first day was completely blocked up and in terms of being able to go sleep, again my head was elevated and surprisingly I actually managed to sleep through the night for the most part. I woke up twice, once I woke up because uh, my mouth was just really dry and I, needed, and I needed some water, the second time I woke up was just because I needed the toilet from having the water. Um, so honestly sleep was quite good so I was quite happy with that. Day two my sleep did get a lot better. Um, I only woke up once through the night, so that was good. So I was really happy with that. Again, no pain whatsoever, just blockage. But you kind of just get used to breathing through your mouth, so it's not it's not too bad. Um, and by day three, so they said to me after two days, the nasal packing will dissolve. It didn't. Um, but from day three, I was allowed to start using uh, a saline or saline solution. So what my what the nurse said to me was I didn't have to buy it from the shops. You could you could go to the chemist and buy the solution, or you can just make it yourself at home. Which basically just boil water in the kettle uh, and add one teaspoon of salt into a cup. So a cup of water, teaspoon of salt, um, and obviously let it cool down because you don't want to be burning your nose. Let it cool down till it's like lukewarm, and then they give you these um, syringes that you just. 10 mil syringes so you do 10 mil on left side 10 mil on the right side and essentially you're just um, standing over the sink and you kind of just put the syringe in your nose and let the water just come back out and that's going to help with cleaning your nose and also it will help the dry blood loosen up and basically help that get clean so I was uh, I was told to do that twice a day but honestly I don't feel like twice a day was enough um, they said to me do it once in the morning once at night so for the first two days, I followed orders and I only did it twice a day. Um, I didn't feel like it was enough. Like my nose felt really dry and I felt like it needed some water to just help it feel a bit, you know, moisturized. So what I started doing from day five. So first two days, you're not allowed to touch your nose at all. Don't do anything. Day three and day four, I was doing the, the putting of the nasal solution twice a day. Um, so this was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So by Friday... Uh, Friday night actually when I did this I actually did the nasal solution three times rather than two twice sorry um, when I did it the third time my right side actually got unblocked uh, and I basically got half my nose back which felt really good uh, because now I wasn't fully relying on my mouth to breathe and it felt really good like feeling air in my nose being able to breathe through it was really good of course my left side was still bunged up the nasal packing was still in there. There was no signs of it dissolving anytime soon. But I did notice that it was coming down um, and I could see it come down. And by Saturday, it was it was hanging out here, which didn't look great. So I just put the, the tape around so I couldn't see it and my mum and sister couldn't see it either. Um, but yeah, so I, I did the nasal solution three times a day instead. I thought, you know, I can't see it being a big issue. So I did it for a third time 
three times a day actually definitely help because by the next the next day or by Saturday more was it Sunday morning sorry my nasal packing had completely come out so once I had done the morning solution I noticed that as I was wiping uh, my nose obviously very gently I noticed that it was starting to fall out and I you know let it come out very very slowly I didn't didn't pull or tug on it because you don't want to be doing that it came out and it was gross but honestly it felt so good I almost felt like I basically got my entire nose back. Of course, it wasn't 100%. There was still some sort of blockage. I feel like there might have been nasal packing at the very top that hadn't come out. Or maybe it was just like, uh, you know, a lot of mucus stuck together or something or crusting that was still need that still needed to be cleared up. I'm not sure. But either way, oh, my God, when the nasal packing came out, I felt so relieved. It felt great. Because um, one thing I didn't mention is that when you have the nasal packing, um, if they put it on both sides, you know, your nostrils will f- seem bigger, they'll feel more rounded. Uh, because mine was only put in one side, this nostril obviously looked normal, this one looked a lot bigger and rounder. Um, but don't worry, that's just the nasal packing, it's not going to change the shape of your nose. And in fact, the septoplasty surgery doesn't alter the um, alter the shape of your nose. So yeah, nasal packing came out. So this is like five days now, and I'm feeling good. It's def- I'm definitely feeling improvement. Um, but still doing the nasal solution twice, a, uh, three times a day actually. And by day six, which was Monday, I was still feeling even better. I was starting to get better sleep. Like I was actually able to sleep through the night without waking up, which is great. I was sleeping and waking up with my mouth closed, which was great because I was breathing through my nose. I was still very gentle with my nose in terms of like actually cleaning it. So whenever I would wash my face, I would be extremely, extremely gentle with my nose. Um, so I'm very much actually looking forward to actually giving my face a proper scrub because you don't want to scrub too hard on your nose. So I was almost just literally in very sort of slow, uh, gentle motion, just sort of cleaning my nose. You will find that your skin will get really dry. I could feel literally like sort of dry skin just peeling off, which is kind of gross, but it is what it is. So yeah, moving on to day seven. It's been a week now since the surgery and... I've basically got my nose back. I'm sleeping through the night. I'm able to breathe through my nose. I'm definitely feeling better day by day. So I've stopped the nasal solution now because I was told to only do it for a week. Sorry, no, I started the nasal solution on day three. So by day 10, I was completely done with it because they said to only do it for a week. So I didn't want to overdo it just in case. Um, But yeah, I didn't feel like I needed it anyway because I was able to start breathing through my nose. Um, At one point though, I think it was day eight, my nose felt so dry, like it literally felt empty. It felt horrible. Um, And I was kind of scared about having empty nose syndrome, which you can Google, but, uh, or maybe not Google, it's not not a good thing. Um, So I was a little scared that maybe I have that, but thankfully the next day I started to feel more mucus come down. And that definitely, honestly, like, being snotty when you when you have a cold or generally is disgusting but when I started to feel kind of snotty I felt really happy uh, because my dry, nose no longer felt dry and yeah I was able to I just felt like you know my nose was doing its thing and it felt good so yeah really happy so yeah 10 days and I have to say I've pretty much recovered I would say for the most part so I no longer have to do the nasal solution I'm bre- re- breathing through my nose I'm sleeping through the night, getting a lot better sleep. I can definitely tell that the surgery has, you know, it has worked. Um, so what I was doing, actually, I was actually looking at my nose. So I would get my iPhone, um, I'd put the torch against my nose, I'd sort of look up into the mirror and I can see that both sides now actually look symmetrical and I can sort of see the nasal pathway right at the top of my nose. Um, and they both look equal. So I can see that, you know, that that's definitely worked now. Um, so yeah it took about 10 days to actually feel almost 100% I would say Um, it was really nice when I could feel especially when my left side got unclogged and I could really feel the air go through my nose at that point I felt really happy and you know that kind of verified the fact that my surgery has gone well alhamdulillah really happy about that so yeah I can breathe I can sleep Um, of course my nose still feels a little bit sensitive in the sense that I don't want to you know touch it really um i'm very gentle with it when i'm like washing my face um i'm not blowing my nose 
when I'm sneezing, when I need to sneeze, I open my mouth. So that's one thing they will tell you is don't sneeze through your nose. Um, this is usually like the information that they give you is usually, usually for the first two to three days. Um, after that, they don't really advise you on do's or don'ts. But I personally would recommend doing a week without uh, following the instructions for a week. So in terms of sleeping with your head elevated. So it's been two weeks now and I'm still sleeping with my head elevated. I'm still sneezing with my mouth open. I'm still not blowing my nose. Um, I just want to be extra careful because I do, there's still some sort of sensation in my nose. I can still feel like, you know, my nose is healing. It doesn't hurt. There's no pain whatsoever, but I can definitely feel, um, you know, it, it, it's healing. So I'm just being extra cautious. So my post-op checkup is in two weeks time. So they did say it would I would get an appointment after three weeks from the date of surgery, but it, was, it ends up being four weeks, um, which is absolutely fine. So March 28th is my appointment and I'm very much looking forward to that checkup just so they can have a look inside my nose and actually verify and confirm that all is good. There's no issues. Um, it's, you know, gone successfully. Like, of course, I can feel it. My breathing's better. You know, I used to feel really anxious when I was around people with my breathing because I'd find that I'd breathe quite heavily, especially when I was in uh, in the cinema, for example. And, you know, when there's like almost no audio or it's really quiet. Uh, before the action kicks in or whatever um i used to feel really anxious when it was quiet and i was just like oh somebody talk please just so i didn't have to feel like people are hearing me breathe really loudly or even when i was with friends and family inside the house anytime there was like a moment of silence whether it was on the tv or just from our conversation i could feel like my breathing get heavier and i feel like the more i thought about it the more i thought about it the more heavier i would get so i was really anxious about that but alhamdulillah, I can breathe now. I feel so much better. My breathing's better. My sleeping's better. Still no pain. Uh, alhamdulillah. So all really good. Very successful. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy. I'm definitely glad that I went back to the doctor. And, you know, I, I was adamant that I was going to get it fixed because it was becoming quite frustrating. Um, thankfully for me, it wasn't a, a, it wasn't a daily consistent thing. So, you know, I wasn't having nose blockage every single day it wasn't 24 7 you know it might have been for an hour in the day or throughout the night for example but it was there and it was very annoying um i feel like it might, it might have been caused through an injury i'm not 100 percent sure because they do say that you can be born with a deviate septum but it is a common issue um i do feel like i got it personally from an injury but it is what it is and it's now fixed i'm really happy about that so yeah very positive experience from me what i will say though is do not, and I mean do not, look at videos on how the surgery is actually done. So I made that mistake uh, actually on the second day, so the day after my surgery, because like I said, I was too, I didn't want to scare myself by Googling it or anything like that. So I didn't bother, but I was very intrigued as to how they actually performed the surgery. So the day after my septoplasty was done, I Googled it and I watched a YouTube video where the surgeon basically used the endoscope, so that's basically a camera they put up your nose so they can see what they're doing. Um, and she showed the camera view so you can see exactly what she was doing. And honestly, don't do it. It's oh, gross. It's really nasty business. Like you can see them making the cut, you can see the bleeding. Oh my god, gross. Um, don't watch it. It's just gonna, especially if you've not had your surgery, definitely do not watch it. It wasn't too bad for me because mine had already been done, so I didn't care too much, but I was still really grossed out. I couldn't watch the entire video. I kind of skipped through it, but I was very intrigued as to what they do uh, in terms of, you know, making an incision within your nose. Um, and I think that's actually one of the reasons why it doesn't hurt so much because it's done internally. Um, but yeah, if you want, obviously, you can Google it and find out how it's done. You can watch the video if you really want to, but honestly... It might gross you out. So just a warning. I definitely didn't do it. But obviously, if you want to, feel free. Anyway, that was my experience and my recovery. So Alhamdulillah, it took me, I would say, basically 10 days to go from zero to 100% pretty much. I got my nose back within um, three. After three days, I got my right side of my nose back. So half my nose. And by day five, I've pretty much got all my nose back. But by 10, it was pretty much 100%. So yeah, I would say about 10 days. They do say uh, one to two week recovery and you will need to take time off work. So before you're discharged, the hospital will give you the option to get a sick note if you need it. I'm currently 
unemployed unfortunately I was made redundant so I didn't need a sick note because I'm not working anyway but they will give you the option to get a sick note for up to two weeks personally I would say one week you 1000% need you need that week to recover and whilst you might think oh well it's just my nose I still have my arms and my legs um no that's honestly you're gonna feel drained you know your body is using all of its energy to work on healing your nose uh, healing the wounds inside your nose so you definitely want to take a week off at least two weeks would be good so that you don't have to rush back into work um, but definitely take it easy when you do have your surgery follow all of the instructions hopefully this video has helped you as well but definitely keep your head elevated do not blow your nose um, if you feel like you need to clean your nose then just kind of dab it at the bottom at the tips uh, but you, when you do the nasal solution you know with the salt water that will help clean it out anyway uh, but definitely don't blow your nose don't touch too hard on it I would avoid going out especially in the first seven days um, so the reason I don't leave the house is because you just never know like you might just want decide to go for a walk but what if somebody bumps into you or somebody's running and they kind of push into you and you fall down and you break your nose uh, I'm very paranoid like that so I decided to I'm just going to stay home for seven days I didn't leave the house for a whole week uh, by day eight I did leave the house and I went for a walk um which wasn't too bad it was super cold though so I did feel that cold air go in my nose which wasn't fun but it also was quite nice to feel air go in my nose um, I hope you found this video useful and if you've got any questions on the septoplasty surgery or the recovery that I may not have covered in this video then be sure to drop a comment below and I'll get back to you soon as always thank you for watching peace <laughs>